this is Dr. Nock, and we're going to go over section 13.5, the binomial theorem. Let's first go with the definition and the symbol, or the, I should say notation. So the symbol in a little bracket with N on the top, J on the bottom, we call that N taken J at a time, or more commonly we say that N choose J. And that is defined as n choose j equals n factorial all over j factorial times n minus j factorial. So for example 1, if I have 5 choose 1, by definition that's going to equal to 5 factorial all over 1 factorial times uh, 5 minus 1, which is 4 factorial. Now expand the bigger factorial up until you reach the smaller factorial, which means that expand 5 factorial until you reach 4 factorial. So that way you can cancel out the 4 factorials from the numerators and denominators. But uh, regardless of however you want to do it, it's okay, but your answer is going to be 5. And here are some useful formulas. You can easily uh, derive this, so you don't need to really memorize it. But n choose 0 is 1, n choose 1 is n, and n choose n minus 1 is n, and n choose n is 1. Again, you do not have to memorize it. All you have to do is apply the definition. Now, what we're going to talk about is this thing called Pascal triangle. Um, this triangle was invented by this French mathematician named Bledes Pascal. That's where the name comes in. However, if I remember correctly, um, this triangle was already invented by Indians and Chinese about 350 years before Pascal's time, believe it or not. Now, the Pascal's triangle is used to compute the binomial coefficient of the polynomial of the form, uh, maybe like x plus y to the nth power. So, for an example, expand the quantity x plus 1, whole thing to the second power, if you multiply that out, that's 1x squared plus 2x plus 1. So the coefficients are 1, 2, and a 1 in that order. So let's go over how the Pascal triangle was invented. So on the top of the page, on the Pascal triangle, do you see 0 choose 0, 1 choose 0, 1 choose 1? The next third row will be 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1. 2 choose 2, and the fourth row is 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3, and do you see the pattern? But anyways, um, if I compute those values, 0 choose 0, that's 1, and when n equals to 1, meaning the top number is 1, then 1 choose 0 is 1, and 1 choose 1 is also 1. And let's go with the third row when n equals to 2. 2 choose 0 is 1. 2 choose 1 is 2. And 2 choose 2 is 1. So by applying the definition that we went over on the previous page, you just keep doing that. So here I went up to when n equals to 5, and this is the computation that we get. Okay, so this is called the Pascal's triangle. So basically it has 1s down to all the sides. And to get to the other entry, add the two nearest entries in the row above. So for instance, let's look at n equals to 1 and n equals to 2. So do you see that if I add 1 plus 1, it's going to equal to 2. All right, now let's stare at um, n equals to 2 and n equals to 3. So let's, let me just pick these two. If I add those two, then 1 plus 2, we're going to get 3. And then 2 plus 1, we're going to get 3. And if you look at n equals to 3 and n equals to 4, if I add these two, you're going to get 4. If I add these two, you're going to get 6. If I add these two, you're going to get 4. You can do the same thing for n equals to 4 and n equals to 5. As you can see, if I add 1 plus 4, you're going to get 5. 4 plus 6, 10. 6 plus 4, 10. 4 plus 1, 5. Now, how is that going to be used is the next theorem, the binomial theorem. So it says that let x and a be real numbers for any positive integer n, 
x plus a whole quantity to the nth power equals 2. n choose 0 times x to the n plus n choose 1 times a times x to the n minus 1. And then you're going to have n choose 2 times a squared times x to the n minus 2. So the, in general, the, your formula is going to look like n choose j times a to the j times x to the n minus j, where n choose j is called a binomial coefficient. And those binomial coefficient are defined by the Pascal triangle. I know the expression looks really nasty, but do not worry about it. Let's do some examples. Okay, so let's uh, look at this example. Use the binomial theorem to expand 2y minus 3 whole quantity to the fourth power. So first, let me write down the formula for the binomial theorem. Okay, let's note that x minus, oh sorry, plus a to the n. You can expand that as n choose 0 x to the n plus n choose 1 a times x to the n minus 1 all the way up to n choose j a to the j and then x to the n minus j and then n choose n a to the n. So let me rewrite the problem. So we have 2y minus 3 to the fourth power. Now, in order to apply this theorem, you better have a plus in between. So here, I'm going to rewrite it as 2y plus minus 3 to the fourth power. Next step, uh, let's determine who's going to play the role of x, a, and then n. So according to this, this is going to be playing the role of x, and then you have a plus, and then minus 3 is going to be the a, and then 4 is going to be n. Don't worry, I'll, I'll write it out nicely. So our x is 2y, a is negative 3, and then n is 4. All right, are we ready to do this? So we're going to apply that formula. So let me just go over here and rewrite it again. So we have 2y plus minus 3 to the fourth power. So first one is going to be n choose 0. So that will be 4 choose 0 times x. But our, our x is 2y. So be careful there. So we got a 2y to the nth power, which is 2y to the fourth. And then plus, next one's going to be 4 choose 1 times a, which is negative 3, and then x to the n minus 1, so our x is 2y, and then n minus 1 would be 3. And then plus, 4 choose 2 of a squared, which is negative 3 squared, and then we're going to have 2y squared. And then we're going to have plus 4 choose 3 times negative 3 to the third, and then 2y to the first, and then finally, 4 choose 4 times a to the n, so which is negative 3 to the fourth. Now let's uh, expand this out a little bit more. So let's compute 4 choose 0, so that will be 4 factorial over 0 factorial times the 4 factorial, and then 2y whole quantity to the fourth power is going to give us 16y to the fourth, and then plus, next one is 4 choose 1, so it's 4 factorial divided by 1 factorial, times it by 3 factorial because it's n minus 1. Then here you're going to have negative 3 times 8y to the third, and then next one is what 4 choose 2, so it will be 4 factorial all over 2 factorial times uh, 4 minus 2, that will be 2 factorial, times 9, and then 4y squared. And then next one is 4 choose 3, so it's 4 factorial over 3 factorial times 4 minus 3 is 1 factorial, multiplying here by 
negative 3 to the third, so it's negative 27, and then multiplying here by 2y, and plus the last term is going to be 4 factorial all over 4 factorial times the 0 factorial times it by 81. So let's simplify the coefficient, which is all the one with the factorials involved in it. So let's just look at this one. 4 factorial divided by 0 factorial is 1 times by 4 factorial. So this is going to be 1. Now let's look at over here. So this is same thing as 4 times 3 factorial, whole thing over 1 factorial is 1, and then 3 factorial, cancel out the 3 factorials, and this is going to become 4. So this is 1, 4. All right, now let's take a look at this one. So here, you could do however you want to, but this is 4 times 3 times 2 factorial, all over 2 factorial times by 2 factorial. Ah. There you go. So you can kill the one of the factorial, two factorials, and then here you're going to have 4 times 3 all over 2 factorial, which is 2. So here what we're going to get is 6. Okay, now next one. This one is going to be 4 times 3 factorial dividing by 3 factorial times 1 factorial is 1. So simplify. This coefficient is going to be 4. All right, and the last one. So, four factor zero factorial is one. So cancel out the four factorial. You're gonna get one. Now let's put it all together. So this is gonna equal to sixteen y to the fourth, and then minus ninety six. Is that right? Y to the third, and plus two sixteen y squared minus two sixteen to the y plus eighty one. So that's going to be our answer. Let me just box that. And let me just show you how to do this by using the Pascal triangle. So if I want to use the Pascal triangle, notice that our n is 4. So let me just write it the Pascal triangle down again, so you're going to have 1, 1, 1, 1, and then you're going to have 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, and then 1. And the last row is when n equals to 4. Do you notice something? These numbers. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Isn't it nothing but the coefficient on this guy? 1, and then the next one was 4. And then 6, 4, and then 1. That's how the Pascal triangle can be used. Let's take a look at another example. Example 3, find the coefficient of x to the 7th in the expression of uh, 2x plus 3 whole quantity to the 9th power. Okay, so let's uh, rewrite that binomial theorem again. So it goes x plus a to the n. That's n choose 0, x to the n, plus n choose 1, a, x to the n minus 1, and then plus n choose 2, a squared, x to the n minus 2. And the general form is going to be n choose j of a to the j, and then x to the n minus j. Now let me rewrite the problem again directly below of this formula. We got 2x plus 3 to the ninth. So in this case, our, oh, there are too many x's flying around, sorry, our x, which will be this x right here, is 2x, and then our a is 3, and then n is 9. Now what we want is the coefficient on x to the 7. So if I look at the general form of the binomial theorem, it looks like n choose j, a to the j, times by x to the n minus j. But since we want to find the coefficient on the x to the seventh power, that means that this exponent, these numbers, has to be 7. But since we already know that n is 9, so 
that implies that our j must be 2. So now to compute the coefficient, all you have to do is just plug those values in there. So let's do that. So n is 9, and then j is 2, and then our a is 3 to the j power, which is 3 squared. And our x, be careful, our x is 2x. I'm going to have 2x to the 7th power. So if I simplify this a bit, we're going to have 9 factorial over 2 factorial times by 7 factorial uh, times 9. And 2 to the 7th is what, 128? And then x to the 7th power. So this is going to be 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Whole thing over 2 factorial is 2. And then we're going to have a 7 factorial, which is going to cancel each other out. And then here, if I multiply this 2, what do we get? 1, 1, 5, 2 to the x to the 7th. So if I simplify this portion here, you're going to get 36. And then multiplying here by 1,152x to the 7th. So this is going to be 41,472x to the 7th. So therefore, the coefficient on x to the 7th is this crazy number, 41,472. And here is our answer. So in general, the expansion of x plus a to the n, the term containing x to the j's power is going to be n choose n minus j times a to the n minus j times x to the j. So if I use this, the coefficient on x to the seventh, exactly what we just computed is 9 choose 9 minus 7 because our n is 9 and then our j is the exponent on x so that will be 7 and then multiplying here by a but our a is 3 in this case 3 to the 9 minus 7 now our x quote unquote x is 2x to the 7th power so which gives us 9 choose 2 times 3 squared, and then 2x to the 7th power. So, which makes sense because we got the same one. Well, where did it go? Where is that? Right here. So, it makes sense. Let's do another one. Find the sixth term in the expansion of 3x plus 2 whole quantity to the 8th power. So I don't want you to get confused between the previous example, example 3, and example 4. Now example 3, you're asked to compute the coefficient on x to the certain power. Whereas here, you're asked to find the sixth term after you expand this expression. So here, if I were you, I'll just expand it out up until I reached sixth term of this uh, expansion. So let me just write it as... 3x plus 2 to the 8th. So I'm going to follow the binomial theorem. Let me, I should write this out, huh? So our x is 3x, and then our a is 2, and then n is 8, and then this is of the form x plus a to the n. All right, so if you look at the formula, then here what we're going to get is, let me go over here. So you get 8 choose 0 of 3x to the 8th and then plus 8 choose 1 times a and then our x to the n minus 1 that will be 7 and then plus 8 choose 2 2 squared 3x to the 6 how many term is that that's first second, third, oh, we got ways to go. And then our fourth term is going to be 8 choose 3 
and 2 to the third, and then 3x to the fifth, and plus 8 choose 4 of 2 to the fourth, and then 3x to the fourth, and then plus 8 choose 5 times 2 to the fifth, and then 3x to the third. So I believe that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is our sixth term of the expansion. Okay, so all we have to do is compute that and then we're done. So therefore, our sixth term is 8 choose 5, 2 to the fifth, and then 3x to the third. So which is 8 factorial over 5 factorial times 3 factorial. And then here you're going to have 32 times 27 to the x to the third. So here, what do we get? 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial all over 5 factorial and 3 factorial. So you could kill this. Uh, 5 factorials out and then if I multiply 32 and 27 that's 864 and then x to the third so this is going to be what is that 3 factorial is 6 so you got 8 times 7 times 6 dividing by 6 so that's 8 times 7 that's 56 times 864 and then x to the third so oh, I don't want to do this okay I'm going to do it by hand what is that? 48,384 x to the third. Can you please double check? Because I don't have my calculator here with me. But you get the idea of what to do. So all you got to do is multiply 56 and 864 and then x to the third. And so that will be the sixth term of the expansion of 3x plus 2 whole quantity to the eighth power. So this is our answer. So I'm going to stop here. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. And great job once again, everyone. And I'll be talking to you soon.